Thank you, Stacy, for joining me today. Can you start off by telling me the League's priorities and also when was the League started? Well, the League was actually started in 1920, the same year that women got the right to vote. It emerged out of the suffrage movement uh, and the woman who was in charge of the suffrage movement or one of the organizations of the suffrage movement, uh, Carrie Chapman Catt, realized there was more work to be done past giving women the right to vote. Women needed to be informed about the issues in a nonpartisan fashion. And that's actually the overall priority of the League is to inform the population in a nonpartisan way through careful study of um, uh, pro both pros and cons of issues um, and also issues that we advocate on. Now, a lot of our viewers might be familiar with the League's voter services, but mm -hmm. what are some of the other priorities of the League of Women Voters? Uh, well, there are actually two arms to the League of Women Voters. As you said, there's voter service, where we usually just present the candidates, let people make up their minds, and um, we also give people the pros and cons of the propositions, county measures, et cetera. Um, we also do advocacy, and what's interesting about that is uh, quite a few people confuse us with being partisan, whereas we really aren't. We're very nonpartisan. Uh, what happens with the League is we do studies very careful studies, either at the national level, mm -hmm. which supersedes the state level, which supersedes the local level. But there's always a study done and a consensus reached on that study and the findings of that study before the League formulates a policy. Once it formulates a policy and a proposition comes onto the state ballot or a measure comes onto the county or the city ballot, we're able to take a position either yes, no, or no position based on our study. Okay, and what are some of the projects or ballot measures or propositions that the League of Women Voters is working on? And I also like to know what are some of the past um, issues that League of Women Voters has kind of really had their hands in here in the local Santa Barbara community? Uh, well, actually the League of Women Voters locally has been very involved in environmental issues. Um, we're very involved in uh, sustainable having a sustainable community, and we've been very involved in healthcare, which is also a very big priority at the national level. Uh, we did advocate for the healthcare bill that was eventually passed. And again, that wasn't a partisan move, that was based on careful study and the need of the people. Okay, and asking a personal question, how and when did you become involved with the League of Women Voters? Uh, I, I've always been interested in women's issues, and um, I have been active in a partisan fashion in the past, but I decided I wanted to be active in a nonpartisan fashion. League really fit that for me. Um, I began serving on the Pro Choice Coalition for the League, again, which is a position they arrived at after careful study, and um, eventually moved on to the board as a vice president. Well, congratulations, and thank you for serving in that position. Up next, we'll be talking with Beth. Thank you, Beth, for joining me today. Thank you. Can you start off by telling me, or I guess describe for me rather, who the League of Women Voters is? Sure. Well, members of the League of Women Voters are men and women of all ages. In my experience, I've met people from four different generations. There are members in our local league who have been members for 50 years and more, and they have a long legacy of work in the community. Uh, there are people like myself, I'm in my mid-40s, Gen, Gen X, and I'm just looking to spend some time outside of my work and personal life to do something in the community. There are also younger members, uh, college students, people from all walks of life are members of the League. If a young person is interested, and I know myself, I mm -hmm. almost seem intimidated by mm -hmm. the League of Women Voters. If is it an opportunity to actually learn about Absolutely. policy rather than coming in already informed? Well, that was really one of the big things for me is I don't know a lot, but I care a about a lot of different issues. And I found that the League is a place to learn. It's a place that ha an organization that has done study and come to um, a position on a lot of different issues, environmental issues, um, issues about um, justice, social policy issues on health care, right. mental health, like Stacey mentioned. yeah, and um, uh, reproductive health, youth issues, criminal justice, 
any variety of issues that, that affect our community, either at the local level, at the state, or nationally, the League of Women Voters has been working on those issues. And so there are members who are interested and engaged on those different issues. And um, as a member, you really have the flexibility to engage at whatever level you're interested in okay. and on whatever issues you're interested in. And you don't need an invitation <laughs> to join. Of course, I am happy to invite you and this anybody watching. This is the community's watching. invitation. Yes, absolutely. Can you tell, from, tell me, and I asked the same question to Stacy, mm -hmm. what brought you to the League of Women Voters? Well, for many years, I relied on the League's um, voter service information, the Smart Voter and Easy Voter Guides. Whenever I was you know, getting ready to vote, I would refer to that information, and I really trusted the information because I knew that it was unbiased. And um, when I was thinking about how I might spend some volunteer time, I care a lot about women's issues, and I care about people getting access to unbiased information. So the League seemed to really fit um, those two issues for me. How can our viewers join the League? And for that matter, why? Why? Well, I think that anybody that is interested in getting involved and making a difference on issues that they care about in the community should consider joining the League. As I said, there are any number of issues that you can get involved with. And because uh, we have so many different issues, um, you can, uh, you know, attend a meeting at any different time of the of the week. There's a lot of flexibility for a busy schedule. You don't have to feel bound to go to, you know, one certain meeting on one day a week like many other organizations. There's a lot of different ways to to get involved. Is there a membership fee that people? Pay yeah, like? there is. A, I, I think every league may be a little bit different, but the Santa Barbara League mm -hmm. has a $60 annual um, dues. Uh, although scholarships are available, we're really okay. eager to make it easy on people who have limited budget to get involved. And um, we also uh, invite people to visit our website. It's um, lwvsantabarbara.org. We also have a Facebook page. And um, there's a National League website and a California League website as well. Well, thank you, Beth, so much for talking to us. I know the League of Women Voters reputation is so respected in the community here in Santa Barbara, as well as state and nationally. Um, I really appreciate you joining us today. Thanks very much. We appreciate the opportunity. You're watching Nonprofit Spotlight. If you'd like your nonprofit featured in a future Nonprofit Spotlight, contact us at the information on your screen.